actually hacked live during his presentation. He accessed a gas pump or a gas station uh, in Venezuela and actually hacked into it and showed us, you know, he's like, look, this, whole, this tank here says that it's half full. I can change this and say that it's almost empty. So when they come in, it will be overflowed. And <laughs> and we're like, what the hell? Is this legal? We're like, what the hell are we doing? It, it's incredible. So welcome. You found CISO Stressed brought to you by Scythe. I'm lawyer Liz, Liz Wharton, Chief of Staff at Scythe. And as anyone who has listened to the show before knows, we are a biweekly conversation with CISOs and those in the executive side of things talking about what stresses them and what they stress within their organization and within the community. So thanks for tuning in. You can find us on the Scythe YouTube channel. You can also find CISO Stressed on wherever you find your podcasts you listen to, so Apple Podcasts, et cetera. And when we, first of all, uh, for this week's guest, we have Ed Rojas, Director for Tactical Edge, which Ed, you happen to throw together some of the best conferences. <laughs> if anyone has the opportunity to attend his events in person, highly recommend. Uh, Ed knows his food, he knows his information, <laughs> cybersecurity, and he also knows uh, sites and everything else that goes with that. But uh, Ed, you're wearing a jersey of some sort. Uh, for those well, who are just listening, it's bright yellow, and I, I feel like you want to tell us about this. It's, uh, <clears throat> Colombia plays today in the World Cup against Argentina, World Cup qualifier. So, so everyone that's Colombian is you're gonna see them with the Colombian shirt, and you know us being Latin Americans, you know it's we like bright colors. So, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Well, we will not lose you in a crowd. No. Uh, I'd say best of best of luck. Uh, I would offer to cheer for y'all, but I have found that when I cheer for a team in sports, that is their uh, death knell. So cheer and, for Argentina. And there you go. I am. Uh, so for the record, for the sports gods, I am kind of cheering for Argentina. But uh, Ed, I mean, first of all, Tactical Edge 1 is not the day job, eh? no. but yet you have built quite, I mean, how many of these do you put host to coordinate and throw a year? I mean, it's like every couple of months. Well, so the event is focused in Latin America. So first of all, thanks thank you for <laughs> inviting me over. I appreciate having this time. Uh, so Tactical Edge was, you know, uh, conceived to, to bring all the uh, best of the best to Latin America because you guys don't get to go down there that often. And so I started doing this about six years ago and it has taken from there. We went virtual before virtual was cool. And then 2020 came along and I was like, I already know how to do this. So, um, so yeah, so we did a whole bunch of events virtually. Uh, we just finished in May, the uh, Latin event we're going to do now in June 23rd, which you are part of that, the uh, US event on June 23rd. And, um, and then in July, I'm starting a new event focused on AI. And it's going to be, uh, you know, AI in Latin America. So that's one of our good friends in common, Pablo uh, Brower is going to be our keynote. Uh, for that event, so kicking kicking it off very strong. And well, then and I, October, the last mm -hmm. one, the October is the jewel yeah. of the of the crown is the uh, CISO Latin Summit, and it's going to be. We like to have it in Colombia, in a beautiful area. Two years ago, pre-COVID, you came and you were part of that event in Cartagena. This time, we're going to do it in another uh, coastal city in Santa Marta, Colombia, uh, October seventh. So. It's gonna be awesome. 
And you're being humble, which yeah. is surprising for anyone who has actually met Ed in person because he is a personality uh, and a, just a very, very engaging person to be around. But when you talk about these events, one of the things that has been focused uh, from the executive order that came out from the Biden, uh, President Biden, on down, we've been hearing all about the colonial pipeline and all these different big ransomware and other events. And the drumbeat is information sharing, information sharing, best practices. We need to all get on the same page and pay attention. And you've done that. You've created these events of information sharing, bringing in Different, but they're not small events. I mean, they're not an RSA level, but at the same time, yet, yet. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, we're talking hundreds of C-suite executives of the practitioners, the researchers, and Pablo, I mean, was a guest on another CISO stress, of course, shameless plug, find his episode, listen, he's it's amazing. Yeah. But you are, you're bringing together and connect, creating these connections that just to say that, oh, we're having an AI, you're bringing together, you're basically walking the walk of what they've asked. How did the connection, was it just, being from that area, doing business in that area, you saw a gap. Tell us a little bit about how you've been able to build this network. Yeah, so a, a, a long time ago, I used to have a, a, a consulting company that was in, we had offices in Colombia and in Chile, in Santiago. And we were focused in cybersecurity. And in those days, cybersecurity was new in the state. We knew it was getting you know importance, but it was unknown in Latin America. Uh, there were probably like two or three CISSPs, you know, uh, I, when I hear the term CISSP, I <laughs> remember Javad and his, uh, you know, I'm a CISSP. Um, anyway, um, at that point, I figured, you know, it'll be easier for my company, from a marketing perspective, to bring together a lot of companies in a large event and that'll take care of my marketing, right? I don't have to go <laughs> knock on 800 doors diff, you know, at, at a time. They could just come in all at once. And to do that, I needed to bring, you know, the best of the best to Latin America because that's never been done before. And I'm talking like 11 years ago. And so I started an event called Security Zone, and I brought people from all over the planet, from the state. I even, uh, this guy from uh, India, Vivek Ramachandran, People probably know of him. Um, uh, anyway, uh, from we brought people from India, from Europe, uh, from the states, and it was a big hit. Um, things happened. I had to come back to the states. All the company, blah 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 blah. And then five years ago, I'm like, you know what? Why don't I do that again? And 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 then that's how Tactical Edge started. And I just, you know lucky that I have uh, good friends in the industry, you know, Andy Ellis, Wendy Nather, you know, uh, uh, Wolf. Like I said, the best the of the best. The yeah. best of the best, I know. And through them, I got to meet you and, and Andre, Dr. Andrea Limbago and, and a whole bunch of other, you know, characters there, Mike Kaiser and, and uh, <laughs> our, our good friend Ryan. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, I just feel blessed that I get, you know, get to know you and and i invite you to colombia which is not an easy thing right i mean a lot of people always yeah. like, oh, i want to go but some of you do say you know i want to go because again you know it's, what you say is part of the information sharing is like we talk all the time that we want to share information but do we actually do you know what we need to do and so when people like you and you know wendy and everyone accepts the invitation and joins me in Colombia, it's a big deal. It's a, it's, it's a big, big deal. And um, and when we have seen somebody in Colombia told me, I, I see what you're trying to do, 
this is like the Wendy Nather of Colombia. Uh, her name is mm -hmm. Olga Botero. And she said, uh, I see what you're trying to do. You, you just need to create that community, right? And, and, and that is very important. So Tactical Edge has grown from being an event that is a Colombian event in Bogota uh, five years ago, six years ago. It went from 200 people to last year during the COVID epidemic, we went up to about 2,000 people, right? And it was people coming in from Canada all the way down to the tip of Argentina, and then they jumped off to Europe and, and Asia. So, have, you know, we've been lucky. We've been able to grow the event. We have been able to share information. You guys have shared a lot of information. In the CISO summit that we did in Cartagena, it was two days, and I was upset. I thought that it had failed because we had 60, 60 CISOs. And I'm like, you know, you guys came all the way over here just to talk to 60 CISOs. And then Wendy looks at me and she goes, are you kidding me? <laughs> we, we barely get 10 CISOs or 15 CISOs. And for one hour, we don't keep them here for two days. So yeah. she was impressed. I was like, oh, OK, that's good then. <laughs> well, and it's, it's the conversations. It's those relationships that get built because you know, one of the, uh, I've been listening to a bunch of the congressional hearings as they talk to CEO from uh, Colonial Pipeline and, you know, even down to Solar Winds, it's, you hear this stuff and you hear, well, are you doing best practices? It's like, well, what do you mean? And it was a, you know, this audit was a check the box. So the fact that you can get, you know, 60, 70 CISOs, not to mention two days worth of speakers that were the ones who were doing this research, doing that, saying, hey, yeah, did you check the box, but did you also do this? Or, you know, hey, if you have a question or need information, call me. Because one of the things Scythe focuses on is we do that we push the constantly, you know, it's not just a point in time. You want to know where you are, where you stand with your security kind of constantly. And the conversations that occur that that you create are ongoing throughout the year. They're not just, this is what I learned from this research or this event, but it's creating those, I mean, as you highlighted, you've got four different events in the next four months. And uh, Ed, do you know what vacation is? <laughs> Actually, those events are my vacation. People uh, <laughs> where I work at and, you know, I work for one of the big fours. I'm not going to say who they are, but it starts with a D. Um, <laughs> and uh, Deloitte, to meet you. I remember yeah. seeing that. Delighted to meet you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they tell me, like, w you know, when do you have time to do these events? I'm like, yeah, they're my vacation. That's why I like to do them in Bogota or I like to do them in Cartagena or in Santa Marta because I go, yes, I take a lot of time before going there, but once I'm there, it's, it's, it's exactly it's just watching you, talking to you guys, <clears throat> talking to the attendees. You know, you learn a lot. You, 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 you get a different perspective because, you know, in the States we're focused on you know the the soar you know that's the new, that's the new the technology everyone wants to install soar and let's go play blah 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 you know an intelligent sock and then you go to latin america and they're talking, talking about something different right mm -hmm. they want to have that information they they want to use all those toys but they can't <laughs> so yeah. they have to focus on something else they fact they have to focus on what's really important to them and, and that's one of the things that I, that I think that unfortunately people mi are missing that. Let's say, you know, f you, you have the first world and then third world countries. I don't like those labels, <clears throat> but people from the first world don't listen to people from the third world. And the people from the third world are the ones that have to do the real things because they don't have access to the tools. They know what they're talking about. <laughs> well, it, it is not as if we, you know, the uh, the software, the systems, the hardware, the information says, oh, wait, 
we're at the U.S. border, so therefore we must stop. We cannot go forward. I mean, it's flowing everywhere. And I, if working remotely this past year, year and a half hasn't taught us anything, it's your systems. You're not. It's really driven that home. Is you could be anywhere. Your your workforce, your data. How has it been? Is that do you find that's an eye opener for some of your speakers when they come to or companies that start engaging more to have that realization of like, oh, not everybody's working from the same frameworks, the same starting point as we are. Yeah, and, and so one of the things that is very interesting is in, in and I'm going to speak from Latin America because that's where my expertise lies. The everyone. Everyone in cybersecurity refers to ISO 27,000. Mm -hmm. you, know, you talk to anyone down there, like, oh, ISO 27,000, 27,000, 31, 32, whatever it is. I don't mm -hmm. even know what they are. Uh, <laughs> but they're focused on all of this compliance. And I'm like, that sounds familiar. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. In the States, we're all focused on NIST. Mm -hmm. right? In Latin America, it's all ISO. But now they're switching and they're actually starting to look at NIST as well and this CSF. So those are the little things that you start to comprehend. Critical infrastructure, right? It's, it's, they use the same technology that they use here, they use it down there. It's old technology. It was installed many years ago. So, <laughs> right. right. So the same problems are there, right? And But there are no regulations in Latin mm -hmm. American countries for critical infrastructure until I believe it was last year that a lot of countries are beginning to adopt NERC SIP standards. Wow, I didn't know that. I only found that <laughs> out by speaking to the CISO of one of the largest, you know, oil companies in Colombia. And we and, and he was in one of my shows on the Wednesday's shows, the speaking with CISOs that you were my, my guest in one of those. So he came over to talk to us how he does war gaming to identify threats. Right? Yeah. I, that is fantastic, which goes with what you guys as Scythe try to do, right? It's, it's the mm -hmm. same thing. Uh, they do it the poor way, <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing the same things. Well, yeah, because they're facing the same threats, just with perhaps different architecture yes. uh, or different budgets. Yes. And uh, do you find that they're doing it on some level better because they don't have the fancy tools to rely on. They have to get like brass tactics, like down to basics. Not better, just differently, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they focus on, on you know, they, they, they have to focus on the basics down there, right? They have to focus on the inventory aspect, which we all have the, the, the same thing, you know, uh, the, the, you know, what was the, the, um, the, what's it called? Zip top 20 is that zip? I keep forgetting. Um, anyway, the top 20, the uh, oh, CIS they've lost, type 20. They, they've lost two, they're down to 18 now. 18 now, but they haven't no, lost they the first, just released a first... new in the last like a uh, couple what? of weeks, and I forget Sis, what happened. Sis but... top 18 now, yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a conversation about that on uh, on my thesis program, but I'm pretty sure they didn't lose number mm -hmm. one and number two. Right, mm -hmm. hardware inventory and software inventory. So that's still the the most important one everywhere. So it's the same thing down there. So they 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 do focus a lot on that, um, and and they focus exactly on what they can do, right? With 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 the budget they have. So they do identify what is their biggest risk, right? And then they try to go ahead and protect it. Over here in the states, we're always talking about all that stuff. Right, and we're still talking about which is the first, the best, you know, risk uh, standard that we can use. You know, is it fair? Is it CSF? Mm -hmm. Is it whatever? Down there, they, they yeah, they talk the same thing. They say, well, it's ISO 27, where is it 32 or something like that? But the majority of them, they don't care. They just yeah. go ahead and they're like, we we, we need to do this. Uh, we had one guy from El Salvador in one of our events, and he actually hacked live during his presentation. He accessed a gas pump or a gas station uh, in Venezuela and actually hacked into it and showed us, you know, 
He's like, look, this whole, this tank here says that it's half full. I can change this and say that it's almost empty. So when they come in, it will be overflowed. And <laughs> and we're like, what the hell? Is this legal? We're like, what the hell are we doing? It, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. For the record, I do not practice law in those <laughs> countries. I, so, I told wow. that. <laughs> I am a lawyer. I would not be representing. I would probably be one of the ones sitting in the back out back of the room going, no, we no, didn't. Don't do that. Yeah, that's we told awesome. Them. But yeah. but again, mm -hmm. that, that's just an example. Of, you know, yeah. the level of expertise. That, you know, that, like there's a lot of knowledge down there. Well, and that was one of the jokes that friends would make uh, after when my grandfather was alive and joking because he didn't grow up and, you know, I grew up going and sitting in his bomb shelter basement playing on, you know, ham radios and equipment that he would have built himself because he didn't have the different tools and everything. So, you know, oh, it's, he wasn't running a scanner or this or that. It was like, no, I built it myself. I wrote the code line by line. And when you talk about some of the you know, researchers from countries where it's like, no, I didn't have the budget for that. I had to figure out a workaround and learn that but i imagine it's a great part of the conversation is getting reminded what you know where your tools are being like you have to get creative you as a CISO, you have to figure yeah. out uh that and just because it was earlier today so it's kind of top of mind where some of the uh senators were asking clone pipeline like how much do you spend on cybersecurity each year. And I'm thinking, wow, there are entire countries that don't spend, like that is larger than their GDP, much less their budget to protect a pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, and, and I tell you how it has changed. Like I said, you know, when I had my company down there about 11, 12 years ago, I was trying to sell my services to the CISO of a large financial institution. This person was not even a CISO. I mean, there, there was no such thing. He was the director of technology. And I'm trying to ask him, you know, well, what do you do about you losing money, you know, with the scammers and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, it's easy. We come up with what our, um, you know, our operating budget for the year is. And then we just add 30% to that to cover whatever <laughs> we lose during the year. And I'm like, isn't that a little bit too expensive? He's like, what else can we do? Yeah. It, it, it's not that conversation is no longer the same now. Right? Mm -hmm. Now they are PCI compliant and blah, 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 and socks and everything. And, you know, again, it depends on the industry, depends on, 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 on your budget, the money that you have. Um, FinTech, for example, FinTech is a huge growth in Latin America uh, because you know, you, you have the old institutions, the, the financial institutions, and people are now with the internet and blah, blah, blah. They realize there's better options out there. So mm -hmm. you see a lot of companies in Latin America that are FinTech uh, and, and, and they are growing and they're, they're the ones that are moving a lot of the technology, spe specifically cybersecurity, right? Uh, programmers that are experts in doing secure code development you you, t you go to argentina you talk to them and in uruguay all these people are talking about you know uh, what do you call that a uh, step to the left mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. and, and, and they've been given presentations how to establish this you talk to them and they tell you how, how you can use free open source to set up your own secure code development program Again, they see the, ne the necessity, and they already mm -hmm. went and done it. They can write books about this stuff. They can come to DEF CON, Black Hat, RSA, and present you know, all these things. And we will be like, oh, I didn't think about that. 
Well, it is, it's that creativity. And so a quick uh, reminder that we are, you're listening to CISO Stressed by Scythe. And we're talking with Ed who runs Tactical Edge. And so a, I cannot wait to see the content that comes out because we mentioned a couple of the speakers and uh, between uh, Andrea Lombago, Dr. Uh, Lombago, always fascinates me because she's looking at the data, the not only privacy, but just that world theater. When you have all these different regulations coming in different countries and we forget, I say we, but there's a tendency to be kind of centric around that which is in your hometown or you know your home country, forgetting that when you're working in all these other countries that they may have also their regulations and uh, that's coming up. So Ed, where can people find more information on the schedule and catch at least the virtual or the recordings of some of your shows and some of your information? Oh yeah. So the uh, webpage is tactical co slash en. That's the English version. Or you can just go to tactical co. There's a little English button there. Just click it and you go there. Um, June 23rd is when we have the event. It's, it's going to be you. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, uh, Dave Lewis, uh, Gattaca there. We have Tyrone Wilson. Ming Chow is going to be with us. Kai Rohr is going to join us from Norway. In fact, he texted <laughs> me today. He gets off his motorcycle. He was, one I mean, he, was, like, he was doing some great trips on that. I, I know. It's fantastic, those photos he keeps sending. And uh, it's, it's going to be, oh, yeah, and we have uh, uh, Cheryl Biswas, encrypted, joining us as well. So it's a good, and I, I make sure that I did it only six people this time because, again, one of the things that I've noticed, we're all exhausted from mm -hmm. from virtual events. So I made a short from 9 to 12. Hey, Dave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we made a show from 9 to 12, just, you know, mm -hmm. 30 minutes slots. Let's get in there, present, and go away. So it's going to be fun. So Tactical Edge, that CEO, on June 23rd. Come and join us. Excellent. No, thank you. And I highly encourage anyone, listen to uh, Ed brings great people onto his shows and uh, for weekly conversations, but uh, finding those past events and really taking that conversation as, as the conversation amongst CISOs shifts to we need to uh, build those partnerships. Now, Ed, the last question I always ask everyone is uh, this, and I think you've kind of answered it a little bit, except for maybe in the reverse. So, see, so stressed backwards is desserts, and wow. dessert being a good way to wind down, kind of cap off a meal. So, recognizing that not everybody has the sweet tooth that I have, what is something that you do to cap off your day? Be it a, a good meal or just it's been a good day. What is something that you do to kind of end on a high note? You know, I've been doing this for a while now. And I and seriously, 5 p.m. my time, I'm done. I go downstairs <laughs> in my couch with my wife and we watch whatever shows it is that we want to watch on either Netflix, any of the, or, or you know, Amazon or Disney. So that's that's what we do. We find good detective shows. Right now we're watching mm -hmm. uh, something on HBO Max, uh, Wallander, I think it's called. Ah, that's a good one. It's a good I've one. That. It's a good one. Uh, I just finished watching another one uh, that I share with you guys today, uh, Startup on Netflix. Fantastic if you want to binge watch. But that's what I do. 5 p.m. I just go downstairs to the couch with my wife and I spend two hours, her and I, just watching shows. Super sure. relaxing. Awesome. No, that's uh, thank you for sharing and thank you for joining. And you've catch the next episode of CISO Stressed and find Ed on tacticaledge.co. Uh, and for those like me who are not bilingual, I go to the English version. Uh, and anyway, thanks for joining. You've been thank listening you. to CISO Stressed by Scythe. I'm your host, Lawyer Liz, and we'll catch you next time.